Hi guys, welcome to the Lifted PPG channel. My name is Micah Stevens, and in today's video, we're gonna talk all about choosing the right landing zone for you. So really the important factors that we wanna keep in mind fall under two types of categories, the physical as well as the psychological. So let's break down the four subcategories to the physical. The first one is gonna be objects in and around your field. So there are two primary points to keep in mind when looking at the physical objects factor. The first one is that any object is going to create what we call rotor or mechanical turbulence as that air flows over that object. It's going to make the winds a little switchy and just all around challenging to get that glider flying normally over our head straight and level. The second point to keep in mind is that if that wind does pick up, are we going to be drug into power lines? Are we going to be hung up on that field goal? Whatever the object is, we really want to make sure that it's not posing a, an immediate threat to us to where we couldn't disable that glider in time if the winds were to pick up and get squirrely. The second primary factor we want to keep in mind is the surface that we're choosing to lay that glider out on and potentially get dragged on, right? So I like to say that we want to treat our glider just like we would treat our skin. Both of these things can end up dragging across the ground. So we want to be aware of the surface. Ideally it's grass, nice plushy surface, not going to abrade the wing, that waxy surface that keeps your glider nice and airtight but it's also not gonna be giving us road rash should we get dragged across the field. So the third primary factor we wanna keep in mind is wind, speed, and direction. Before we even lay out our glider, we really wanna pay attention to where the wind is coming from. It's such a nuisance to be laying out your glider out of the wind line and then you go to inflate your glider and it's just a sloppy launch and it could have been easily fixed with just getting your wing square into the wind. So where is that wind direction coming from and what is the wind speed? When it comes to wind speed, we wanna make sure that the wind is not gusting more than five miles per hour greater than the steady state winds. The reason being is that if we are flying through the air, we get up safe and sound off the ground, but now the wind is gusting five miles per hour greater than the steady state, it's gonna ask this wing to kind of come back and then surge forward to find its equilibrium, right? Because the wing wants to fix at a specific airspeed based on what you're trimmed at. So if my glider is going 20 miles an hour and then I get a five mile per hour headwind, now my glider is going 25 and it doesn't want to. So it's gonna slow down. And then following that, it's gonna find its equilibrium by pitching forward. And it's gonna speed up again, slow down, speed up and slow down. So if the winds are gusting more than five miles per hour from the steady state winds, this surging effect, this pitch oscillation can get really drastic and it can make your ride feel really bumpy and just all around not very fun. So that's something to keep in mind with wind speed. So let's move on to the fourth factor and that is the public that is around us. Let's say hypothetically you've got a really nice flying field just down the street from your house but it's a public park and there's generally quite a few people there. Be very mindful as you go to these places that you're not making people feel uncomfortable. As paramotor pilots, obviously we think that we're pretty cool, and it is pretty sweet that we're able to do what we do. But a lot of people out there are fun police, and we want to be aware of where those guys are hiding in the bushes. You know, the classic example is that you've got Granny with her grandson and her snickerdoodle dog, and they see you inflate this glider and start to bring in that power. That spinning blade starts making a lot of noise, and that wing looks awfully big and scary, and it looks hard, right? It looks like something that could do damage. Just be aware of what people are thinking, and always err on the side of caution, thinking that, you know, maybe these guys really don't like to see me here. This is just something that we want to keep in the forefront of our mind, that the public perception is really what matters and what is going to bring regulation to the sport. We enjoy a lot of freedoms. You know, FAR 103 is this long of a list of rules, and we can keep it that way if we give people a wide berth. Again, to recap the four points, we've got objects in and around the field. We've got the surface that you're kiting on, the wind speed and direction, and the public that's around you. So with those factors outlined, now let's transition into the psychological factors to choosing the right landing zone for you. And this is where we'll kind of go into how fresh of a pilot are you, um, where are you in your, your PPG progression. 
as a newer pilot, this is what this channel is kind of geared towards, is the, the newer pilot out of training or the future pilot getting ready to be trained. And this is a primer course for you. So the bottom line is if you can have more space, have more space, right? If you have to drive another 30 minutes to that bigger field, I'm going to opt to do that even as a 700 hour pilot. It's just nice to have the ability to have a lower heart rate as you're taking off. You know, if I'm launching towards trees, I'm going to be a little bit more tense and I'm going to have to pay a lot more attention to where I need to call my abort should I have to. The other half of this coin psychologically is coming in for that landing. Have I taken off from my backyard where there's trees kind of all around and I barely was able to cut hard left and climb out and around? Now, on my final approach, as I'm coming in, I have to clear these tall cedar trees that is now making my landing zone that much smaller. And upwind, I have even more trees that I can't run into. So I highly encourage pilots for their first 30 hours of flying outside of training, just go to that bigger field that's going to give you more berth. It's going to give you a lower heart rate for your launches and your landings, and it's just going to make things feel right. It's going to give you the opportunity to get repetition so that you can gradually shrink your field down, shrink your field down, and still maintain that competence and calmness that is required for a really smooth launch and landing. Okay, thanks for tuning in, guys. I know that was a lot from the talking head here, but I hope this added some value to you as a newer pilot or as an aspiring pilot. It gave you an idea of where to look for your landing zones once you have finished in-person training. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share the video with a pilot in need. Again, just to disclaim, I am not here to replace that live instructor training. Do not teach yourself how to fly. It is a very dangerous thing to do, and you're not likely to survive it. So please do go get training by some reputable instructor. All right, that's it for me, guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.